author Lindsay Levitt. Hi, and I'm author Robin Mellum. And this is the Pages Between Us Project. Project. All right, so welcome back to your next video. You have done a lot already. And that next step is like writing a book and structuring the writing. So you can get your pen moving. Your, by the end of this session, you'll have something written in your story. Before we open up your Google Doc and do that, I want you to think about what kind of co-writing project you're going to be working on. And this is something that you and your co-writer need to decide. Now there's really multiple methods, but four that we boiled down to are, um, the first one is what Robin and I did in the Pages Between Us project, or in the Pages Between Us book series. And we each picked a character and told a story through letters back and forth between our two characters. And so my character would say something and it would have plot elements. Robin's character would say something and how we structured it was even though we plotted the whole book together we did it character by character back and forth each of us being a different character so that's one strategy that you can do is to pick a character and to tell your story through multiple points of view you could even do more than two characters if you want you would be the voice of your chosen character okay so your second strategy that you might use is kind of what we call picking odds or evens meaning that you will be in charge of all the odd number chapters and another person is in charge of all the even number of chapters. So this is a process that Lindsay and I actually are going to use for the project we're working on together right now. So I won odds and I am starting with the first chapter, which we'll share a little bit of that with you in just a minute. Um, so this one is not characters going back and forth. It's a full story going through. And we've decided that I would get started with the voice and the style. See how we feel about that? Then Lindsay's going to pick up with the second chapter and go on from there, but we might have to readjust as you'll see in a little bit when we share with you what we've been working on. So odds or evens where you write one story all the way through, but you're just flipping back and forth on who's writing each chapter. And one example of that is the Dark Deep series by Ali Condi and Brandon Reichs. Although they have parts that they worked on together, which we'll talk about for our next, but for the most part, this book was written chapter by chapter where they alternated. And a part of the difference of a chapter by chapter versus a character is Robin and I had to work really hard to make sure that our characters' voices were distinguished between the two. So you could say, oh, now it's Olivia talking and now it's Piper talking. With the chapter, we're having a continuous voice. So Robin and I want to melt our voices together so it has one narrative arc. And that's an example that you can find in this really great series, The Dark Deep. If you are a middle grade reader who likes Stranger Things, this would be a really good follow-up. And I think there's three books in this series so far too. The next one is um, on the same page. And that means that you're co-writing in real time. And so this can be done by opening up your doc. And we talked about in our earlier video with Google Docs, you see Robin's little cursor, I see my cursor. And we can also FaceTime, call each other on the phone, Zoom, Skype, whatever, so that we're actually writing it in person at the same time, writing the notes. And sometimes we do this as well. Sometimes um, if we're working on a project, for example, the Pages Between Us project, before we started this video, Robin and I got onto a Google Doc and kind of talked about the structure of what we wanted to talk to you guys about and um, wrote all of that out beforehand. So even if you choose one of these strategies for how you're going to co-write your story, you can kind of hop around within it too, which takes us to the fourth one. Okay, so our fourth idea for you guys is we want you to maybe think about mixing it up. So what that means is sometimes we think of creating, especially with a story, we think of who is the author, who is writing it. But there's so many different ways to tell a story and to get all of that down onto the page. And sometimes it's not just the writing, it could be the visuals that go along with it. So your creator friend might be a little bit more on the creative side as far as creating art. So I wanted to show you a different way. So maybe one of you is more inclined to do the writing part of it. The other person is more inclined in gathering the research, the ideas images and then adding some visuals to it so when i wrote the classroom as you'll see down here there are two names 
So it's my name and also Stephen Gilpin. So he brought a lot of this to life. He was the one who came in with all these other different ideas of ways that we could uh, show this story going along. So like this one, if you'll see there, this is actually an overview of a student's desk and they had sketched in some thoughts that the student was feeling. So it was like the camera was looking down on the student desk. So it was really cool to see how the story gets, you know, even better as you go along based on what the artist does with it. So it's not always necessarily just writing back and forth. You might find that you have strengths in totally different ways. So talk about that. Have a conversation, decide which one's best for you. Maybe just mixing it all up. Yeah, so I think a lot of times, Robin, people feel that when you're co-creating, it means it's like this 50-50 split. And it's exactly like, you have to do XYZ and I have to do QRS. When really it's more like a mending of minds. And so we want to make sure, like we talked about before with our creator styles, is that we're playing to each other's strengths. So one of you might find, even if you're doing this like chapter by chapter, that they write three chapters in a row. And the other one of you might do like a character sketch or some research on the setting of the story. And it doesn't have to be equal like time given or equal words written for it to still be a co-collaborative project. You can also, like Robin said, if you do a graphic novel together, it can be mapping out who's who's illustrating, who's writing. I, I We don't want you to get locked in and say, no, it is your turn to do this chapter and then be sitting there saying, I need chapter two right away. You can kind of mix how this process works and that can change throughout the story. It can change throughout what's going on in your lives too. Uh, sometimes Robin and I, when we were writing books, I could be going through really hectic times. So Robin would say, okay, don't worry about it. I'll just write this next chapter for your character. So in the end, by the end of the book, even though we both wrote a different character in the pages between us, I still said some things for her character. And she still said some things for my character as well. Okay. And so by the power of the internet or all of the little gnomes in the basement who are making the wheels turn, we are now going to switch over to a Google Doc and show you what we've been working on, exactly what we're talking about. So now here we are on the inside of a Google Doc. And this is the first chapter, a book, middle grade book that we're starting about unicorns. And so what we've done is before we even got to this point, all that stuff that we talked to you guys about on brainstorming, brain mushing, all of that, we actually went and did all that together. So this is a result of what we talked about, our mapping, kind of some ideas just to get us going. Where do we want to start this? So I started throwing some ideas out there. And in my chapter one, I actually started this with an interview between a newspaper journalist and a unicorn. So the journalist is interviewing the unicorn and asking them about their um, interaction with a human. So in this case, it starts with the interview and then we go down and then I start in on the story through the lush forest and across the meadow. And so at this point, we've decided already that we want this to be in third person. We're thinking about like tone and mood and all of that. We've talked about that. We've tried a few things, but honestly, we might try something else completely different again. A lot of times just getting this first chapter down, and this is kind of is a um, description of this unicorn and her birthday party that she's having. And in a minute here, she might be meeting a, a human. So then once I get to the down to the end of here, I send, well, typically I send a text to Lindsay and it says tag, you're it. <laughs> and then she goes in there and she starts her part on it. Now, once she's read through this, things might start to change completely. Yes, and we might, um, usually before we put pen to paper, We've already started what we talked about in an earlier video about what if. So we kind of have like what's called a hook, kind of just like an idea of what the story's about. Now that can change, but if we just start writing and we're just writing, you know, the bird flew, 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 because we wanted to just get some words on the page, that's not going to progress the story. So we want to have something called a hook. And a hook is what you, if someone says, what is your story about? That's what the story is about. The hook can change, but this helps give you some structure as you begin to think about your voice and your point of view. And is this a serious story? Is this a funny story? Um, how old is my reader? All of those kind of things center around what that hook is. So for the Pages Between Us project, our hook was 
two best friends sharing a top secret notebook about um, their daily conflicts. Now it became more of that and each, both books in the series became a different hook, but that's like all we had to start off with. And so just having a unicorn who believes in humans and others, that's our hook so far. What I will do with this is usually when we're writing books by ourselves, um, I don't know what your process is like individually, Robin. I will usually write a few chapters, stop, look at what I've read, plot out the story more, write some more. I don't let my res myself revise the story too much as I'm writing it because otherwise I get really set on the sentences or getting just the right word and I'm not opening myself up to a first draft. And a first draft, um, Shannon Hale has a quote that says in a first draft, I'm just shoveling sand into a sandbox so that in revision, I can build a cast. So this isn't like the perfect part. This is just getting some words on a page. So I'll go through what Robin just wrote. I'll go through that and I will decide, okay, this part makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, I might put notes in it and say, Robin, I have some questions or you introduce this character. That character really interests me. Can we go in a new direction and follow that character for a little while? So it's kind of a conversation from chapter to chapter where I will now go write my chapter. Good job, Robin, you've already done your work, yay you. I'll go write mine, and with my writing, I'll also have questions for Rob. So it's kind of like with this back and forth, which th we did this with our character writing, and it's the same with chapter to chapter, is making sure that we still stay on the same page. And it can be really fun because I might put a little nugget in there, and Robin might say, ooh, I like that, I like that idea, I'm gonna go with it. So there's a little bit of um, calculated chaos where we get to kind of play with it still and have fun and see what the other person comes up with. But at the same time, we'll keep going using the two words, what if, and then my answer to the, that is, and then. So she'll present a problem or a conflict or a character and I will run with it and say, and then this happened. And then Robin will say, and then this happened. And maybe instead of, and then I say, oh, but what if, and we kind of go this way. So that's the interplay I would say in co-creating Robin is just kind of that back and forth. So for your assignment, for your story, what would we like to challenge our co-creators to do, Robin? So we want you to start thinking about the main way that you can get pen to paper or fingers to keyboard is to think about what does my character want most in life? What is it they really want to accomplish, to see or feel or an adventure, whatever they wanted it to do in life. And that's gonna kind of carry your whole story through because whatever it is that they want in a story, they're gonna face these obstacles. And that's how story is told, is facing up to our obstacles and getting over them. So figure out what your character wants and then go back and decide, okay, where are we gonna start this? So I want one of you to pick a scene, a setting to start it. And that might require some brainstorming on your map again. I happen to decide to start this with an interview with a journalist and then into a birthday party scene. Now, when Lindsay and I talk about this again, we will do the what if and then back and forth. And that's where the fun comes in because it might be, I may have made a birthday party with lots of glitter. And she says, wait, what if this unicorn doesn't like glitter at all? And sometimes it's the opposite idea that makes it so much more unique and fun. So do the what if, start your document. One of you goes first, figure out what your character wants. You have a setting and then you need to just go for it. Start writing and do not worry about words, sentences. You're only worrying about ideas because if you don't get that hunk of clay onto your computer screen, you don't have any way to make it into a piece of art. So you guys are ready to go. By Before you watch the next video, get something on the page. Do not worry about it being perfect. We promise it won't be perfect, but getting something on the page is the accomplishment and is your goal right now. We hope that you will like, link, subscribe, whatever else you're supposed to do. Uh, to help us uh, get the Pages Between Us project out to more people. Make sure you're please sharing it with your friends and with your family so that more readers and creators can have an opportunity to learn with us. Pen to paper, fingers to the keyboard, clay on your screen. Do not put clay on your screen.